yeah, it should be it. That's it. Now you see it in big? Yes, sir. Perfect. So I'll first start with the pediatric uh, work group within the 4C consortium. As Griffin, Jeff, and chang pointed out, where there's many different groups. So I'll first talk about the pediatrics group and then on the race and ethnicity one. For the pediatric groups, there's uh, many friends that are recognized here on the call that participated within this first paper that was published in uh, JAMA Network Open, where we looked at the uh, international analysis of EHI in children and youth hospitalized uh, across 60 different countries. So this is the result of a phase uh, one uh, work within the uh, consortium. And where this, where we, as we all know, COVID-19 is affecting less kids than adults, which is good by the end, but makes the epidemiological studies much more difficult because of the sparsity of the cases. And the, um, uh, so that way working within a consortium makes it uh, obvious and evident to be able to have many different uh, sites, hospitals across uh, uh, different countries to be able to capture the information about those kids because there's much less case cases than adults. So we had for the study 671 children and youth that were admitted, so only hospitalized for COVID-19 across 27 hospitals from six countries. And those dots are showing all the different sites because we had those different hospitals that were grouped per sites. And for example, MGB is eight hospitals. Assistance Publique Hôpital de Paris from Paris is three different hospitals in one site. One of the key findings that we had within this consortium, uh, within the pediatric web group, is this had a mutual benefit beneficial on the uh, shared lessons with the IRB in the context of decreasing the obfuscation threshold, where in the context of sharing aggregate counts, uh, because as Griffin was pointing out for the phase one, there's only aggregate counts uh, that has been uh, processed and, and shared. And there's, there's a obfuscation threshold with a lower limit for specific sites. And the work within this consortium by sharing this exact slide with a date and so that each site could go to their local IRB and say, hey, look at all the other institutions, they managed to lower down or they even don't have any obfuscation threshold. For example, at Boston Children's Hospital, we don't have any obfuscation threshold. At MGB for adults, it's less than 10 patients. But by showing this, Sean was able to ask and request to have less than three because of this pediatric study. And so there was a mutual beneficial effect as a learning uh, system that enabled to have lower accounts uh, that would definitely help us for this study. So this was definitely uh, one of the uh, positive impact and one of the unexpected uh, awesome positive impact in working within a consortium that enabled to, um, uh, to advance uh, science. Then now looking at the, uh, the data that we got around the 671 patients, looking where the newly hospitalized pediatric patients within the different um, uh, countries from France, Germany, Singapore, Spain, UK, and US. So this is our data from the hospitalized site. And this is the new hospitalized pediatric patients per day at the country level. So look where we were able to, for some cases, not for example, for Singapore, or unfortunately for US, there wasn't a daily count available um, uh, uh, from the beginning, but on the pediatric hospitalized cases, but we were able to use this as one of the elements to sort of do an external validation of the data that we were getting. And uh, from France, where we have five different hospitals that very surprisingly, which is very good news, was able to mimic the national trend of this data. So this definitely worked out for France, 
for UK uh, and going in the right direction for the other sites. But uh, this was very um, uh, encouraging based on this data. Then now looking at the number of patients per uh, uh, country and by age group, where as it was previously reported, there's two different main age groups around 12 to 17 years old and zero to two years old with a smaller, num smaller number from three to five. And this was seen across the various uh, country. Uh, looking now at the complication from those patients uh, during uh, the hospital, a proportion of patients that had those complications during their hospitalizations that were uh, noted using ICD-9 or ICD-10 codes, where the three most complications were cardiac arrhythmia, viral pneumonia, and respiratory failure. We also, as chang -Si pointed out within her study, we also look at the laboratory values, uh, lo speci looking specifically for those kids with uh, the CRP, ferritin, and procalcitonin at the value at the admission that were higher than normal. But what's really interesting and what was we were able to do within this uh, work was to look at the trajectory over time. So the number I previously showed you was the, the, from the day of admission, when this was done, the, when the patients were hospitalized. But what's really intri interesting here is for those um, uh, inflammation marker, all of them go up at, with a spike at day two or day three, and then going down. So this mimic what has been seen with adults but it hasn't been previously reported for kids. And this is the aggregation across all the sites and the, uh, all the different countries. Then looking at the medication use, where, uh, as you know, the, uh, there's uh, getting the uh, uh, drugs uh, and the authorization to use drugs in kids is even tougher than within adults, uh, especially when there's, it's a new disease. So we were able to report the, the, the different medication that were used across those various countries with the different drug class, repurpose agent, investigation agents with remdesivir, where we had uh, uh, healthcare sites treating at least three patients. And we, why at least three patients? This is because of the office, small count of that uh, that we had and the number of patients treated. So we had within this study six patients, pediatric patients that uh, were given remdesivir and also adjunct therapies, um, which makes sense for uh, some of the, uh, the toughest complication. All the data that is presented within this paper and uh, um, uh, also on the website is available for download. That's one of the, the important element for reproductive science enabled by the 4C consortium. So the rule was all the data aggregate per country. So it's not per site or per hospital, it's per country is available for download and available right there to be able to do further study uh, and to, um, uh, in the context of contributing to the, uh, the, the pool of open data uh, to advance knowledge. The next phase that we are going through in the context of the uh, pediatric work group is to look at uh, MIC, the multi-system inflammatory syndrome in children, and to explore the virus complication and the different treatment approach. Also working on the huge mental disorders complication that uh, have, is definitely raising within uh, the, the kids due to COVID or due to the isolment. Uh, uh, that uh, as a side effect of the COVID uh, infection and looking also at the cardiac complication. The now quickly on the race and ethnicity work group, which is another group. And what we've been doing is uh, where we realized that in, the, uh, in Europe, the um, uh, race and ethnicity is not uh, and the data that is being collected, but uh, in many countries, including US. This is uh, information that is routinely being collected within the EHR system by the different uh, system and EHR vendors. 
And when we use these data for research across the various sites, what we realize is how the and how different all these data was collected, how it's a giant mess of uh, being able to reuse this uh, data. So the first approach we had in phase uh, 1.0 and 1.1 was to ask all the sites to map to the US racial and ethnicity categorical of definition from the NIH based on this uh, notification. And those were the different classification uh, uh, categories that were used. American Indian or Alaskan Native, Asian, Black or African American, Hispanic or Latino, Native Hawaiian or other is Pacific Islander, and white. So those are the official NIH definition that we have all have to use within our NIH grants. And what we realize is asking an international consortium to map to this US classification doesn't work. And for example, for Singapore, having uh, uh, all the, the, the the Asian capture for Singapore, where they had much more information and detailed information, like Chinese, Asian, Indian, and Malaysian, that were put into the same category. And then all the other ones were put into other, which was not informative. And uh, for UK, all the represent uh, mixed races and missing information. So that's why we, uh, we realized that uh, this was a first pass, but this wasn't a, a good quality based on the data that was captured. So what we've been doing is to um, uh, be able to improve this by for the uh, the next phase, where one dot uh, uh, one two and two dot two, is to collect all the different local codes of race and ethnicity for each site, to enable a country specific analysis, and then also to implement per country. Uh, so first was to have a bottom up approach, but also at the same time in parallel we do a top down approach but having uh, the national country specific definition of race and ethnicity applied to this data to be able to make sure to capture the right way. So while having both approach in parallel to see which would be the best one for further analysis. And so the, this is what has been going on so far. And you can definitely learn more about the 4C consortium on our website, covidclinical.net. And happy to answer to any questions. Thank you, Paul, Kenshi, and Jeff. Um, in the last minute, are there any other questions for, um, for us? I think you'll be hearing more about 4C and COVID um, uh, throughout the day. I see Ulrich has his hand up. Yeah, thank you, uh, Paul, for this very exciting talk. Uh, the world-spanning uh, data standardization <laughs> seems to be a big issue. The question would be, uh, I'm sure you had to look at the um, HL7 ethnicity and the HL7 fire resources on that. So what's your quick finding? I think it might be insufficient because it's ancient, or did you, did you find anything else? In the context of race and ethnicity? Yeah. Yes, yeah, so HR7 is a, a, a messenger. It's the um, HR7 doesn't provide any data storage of how the data should be collected and captured within the EHR system. It's just a way to transfer information from one system to another. So yes, it enables many different mappings, but what we realized is uh, the data was captured by the different EHR vendors in a real wild west where there wasn't they were using sort of some of the uh, national classification but not always and with different rules of how this data was collected so unfortunately the the the, the deep root cause of the problem can't be solved directly with HR7 because the data was collected into so many different ways. So we have to go back deeper within the EHR system and then map to be able to, re to, be able to reuse this data efficiently. 
Okay, it w well taken. I thought about the ethnicity group uh, tables, which are in HL7, for uh, they got different value sets and that, but yeah, I, I agree they're insufficient for 